Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, my vlog. Now I've built up this uh, little NAM, I've done both of the boards here. This uh, NAM NAP 140. It's easy enough to build up. Um, all the parts were there, that's all good. And I got it connected up over here at the recommended voltage, which is 40 volts per side, and we can go up to eight and a quarter amps of that if needed, which I don't think it will be. Let's take a quick peek at the screen for a quick recap on what this is. Uh, here we are, the DIY boards look. This is, um, well, mine's actually the L. Oh, let's all look on my back again. Where is it? No, nope, it's on the front here. It says, oh, not 140 client LJM, but as pointed out by a sharp eyed viewer, um, Sammy Cox, there, there's no, there's no panda on this one. There's no panda or anything like that on it, but there is this note on the back which is VBE which means the voltage between the base and the emitter has to be less than 450 millivolts. So we've got a... Uh, so we've got a, uh, a multimeter set up here and we can, we can keep an eye on that. I've already got it connected. Uh, pin one is the base and then it goes collector in the middle on this particular one and then on the right hand side pin three is the emitter. So I got my probes connected up between there and there. So I'm just going to power on now on this power supplies. Uh, three, two, one. All right. So we're powered on, and as you can see, the voltage there is 0.39. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it for a few minutes. So I'll fast forward through this bit. Uh, no, natural fact, while that's just warming up slightly, I do like to give a little bit of warm up time keeping on things. Let's go back to the screen for a minute uh, and have a quick recap on what it says. Now, to be honest with you, all I found was this information pretty much copied and pasted. Um, there is no other information, there's no output charts or anything like that, so you get to see anything. It is just as it is, which is not the normal way uh, you don't get these in here you get a bunch of little let me show you here see the little um, like maroon colored red I don't know what color that color is but there's one here right by my thumb that color you get those instead and you don't get any of these these ceramics, see them here, oh, they actually, no, they're not ceramics looking at them, they look like they're um, uh, tantalum, and you don't get any of those, I'm trying to see what else you might have had in replacement of those, you got a little tiny puff there, one, two, three, I don't know if that's for the full kit, it could be, but why would there be three, four? So one, two, three, four, yeah, so these have been replaced as well with these uh, red ones. Because they're different values. In the kit that I got anyway, yeah, all well, this is good. And that's it, that's all she wrote on that. And this is the, the wire up setup. So you can see from here, you got this ground on mine, it says P ground here, which would be power ground. And then there's also the input. So you got the signal input here from the positive and you got the ground there. And this all goes like a star type shape thing. You don't want to connect this to this uh, directly because there isn't a connection between here and here. But when you pull it all together to ground um, on your power supply, that's when that will work. And then you've got your outputs here. I can't remember which side's which. That's uh, VE, the negative side, and this is VCC, the plus side. Oh, it says so here as well, if you can see that. And the speaker outputs. So that's it. That's all, that's all she wrote on that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a peek. Now this thing's settled a bit. A quick look at the quick look at the bench and we can see we're on a 0.4348 as it's warmed up and so it's it doesn't go any higher than 450 in actual fact it stays round about this and you can adjust that Let me just show you how you adjust that where's my little tweaky tool yeah right now find things when you want them 
Oh, here it is. So yeah, there's a uh, pot on here, 2K pot. And if we turn it anti-clockwise, it will go down on the voltage on the thing there. Let me just get me a little thing in. And uh, turn it down, look, as it goes down. Oh, you can turn it clockwise and it will go up. So I'm just gonna leave it round about there. Because it doesn't really matter. All right, let's get a setup over here. So on SPA. And we are going to start putting some power in. So let's press play. Oh, we can see that. Let me just bring that down so we got zero at the top there. Bring that back up so we got 160 line here. And so we can see our noise for. Let me just put some averages on that to have a little look. This is with the power on. Let's just average that out. Nah, it doesn't seem too bad. There's our 50 hertz because I'm in the I'm in the 50 hertz area. We've got a couple of little bits going through here. Well, let me turn the average enough so we can um, turn the volume up. So here we go. Input. Oh, input going in. And straight away, you can see. You know, there, there, there's quite a lot of uh, a lot going on here, and if you look here down the bottom, THD plus the noise is uh, near enough 0.1 percent. Uh, THD is a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, and that's let me move that. I'll show you that. That's that's a very small amount of current going in. And as you can see over here as well, on the voltage between the, the base and the emitter has gone up slightly. But that's fine because it can handle five volts between there. Let's start going up more. Um, we could actually say as that's going up that the THD is getting a little bit better. What if I just misplaced myself with that let's go down again yeah look it's a little bit worse there it gets a little bit better then we go up we go up and we get to about there and look we're on um, minus 18.4 dbfs and we've jumped to 0.2 percent our current load is that not a lot not a lot and if I turn it up a bit more, as you can see, the THD now at minus 15.6 dBFS is 3.6%. THD noise a bit more. Let's just turn that up a bit higher. Let's try and get it on that 10 dBFS. There we go. You know, 3.5% still. It's not looking good. I'm going to go here. Just to get that, there you go, 2.9, 3.26. Um, we're using an amp over there. All right, so I'm going to relieve that. Turn it all the way down. Uh, well, you know, that's not good. That's not good. I mean, if you want a, a tube sound, then... It's okay because you've got a lot of a lot of harmonics here. Not that much in between them, but there's still a lot of harmonics there. And the noise floor goes up as well as you go loud. Oh, look, THD 5.2 percent. So there's a little area there where it actually goes up on the THD and the noise. And if we can carry on going up, it drops back down again. So that's just that's just a bit weird, isn't it? Okay. So 4.8 percent at 12.2. This would be normal listening volume, probably, as well. You get the higher THD. Uh, yeah, so look at that, look, 5%. Wow. And the noise floor, look, see how much that drops when you drop it down the volume a bit. That's going to minus 19.8, and we're using 1.6, uh, sorry, 0.63 milli, milliamps. Uh, and then you go up a little bit. And we're on 2% THD. You know, this is at uh, 0.217 milliamps. It's not good. And the noise floor's jumped from down there. 
Let's pull that down. So there's this little bit here, look, in the middle, and then the next jump is there. Yeah, and you see all these when you jump up to that next bit. All these bits come through. And these just more pop. Yeah, that's not very good. All right, so let's just let's just stop that for a minute, and we'll have a little look on frequency response. I'm not going to do much more on this because it's a uh, nasty frequency response. Okay, um, let's just. Oh, there's another allometer. Oh, will it allow me? No, it's not allowing me to drop this baby down. But we'll have a little. Ugh. All right. Okay. All right. So, no, I'm not going to do much else with it. And you can see the frequency response there. Um. Uh, all right. So, it's a thumbs down from me on this. If you want a NAM nap so far, uh, this would be a fail. And the NAM nap 250 is a much better um, outcome than what this is. 28 pound down the drain for me. Um, and you know, the, the thing that gets me sometimes is I, when I build these up, every single resistor is placed so you can read it from top to down. Or if it's left to right, you'll read it from left to right. All the capacitors are all facing the same way. On the lefts, unless it's a um, leap year, and then I'll put them to the rights. And uh, and I, you know, I put a lot of time into make setting these up so that, so it's lovely. And, um, and I can't even sell this on eBay as I'm working with the results. I can't sell it because it's just rubbish, and I wouldn't want to sell it like that. So anyway, that's that. That's the conclusion of that. My uh, my thing is, it's uh, garbage. I wouldn't bother buying one. Uh, but of course, your choice is yours. But if you did want one, that was a NAM. And um, then I would suggest that you go for the NAM NAP 250 because that's a much better output on a kit. And um, you'll be a lot happier with that. All right, that's that. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.